We are 22 West Radio. 22 West Radio is 22 westmediacom and 88.1 FM KKJZ HD3, Long Beach, Los Angeles. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, and now a world broadcasting tag team champions of the world and a cruiserweight champion. I'm Ethan. I'm James. I'm Rob. And this is episode 163 of Beyond the Ropes. We are BTR Pro Wrestling Talk. I'm your host, Ethan. You can find me at uh, EthanEvy95 on Twitter. You can follow James at at JHW Reporter. You can follow Rob at Rob Flores Media. And don't forget the R2th DMs for Ethan. And you can follow the show at Real BTR Radio. Facebook.com forward slash Beyond the Ropes. And of course, YouTube to search up Beyond the Ropes and you'll find over 160 episodes currently uploaded there. I want to start off by acknowledging Roman Reigns as our tribal chief, as you can see here. Uh, Paul Heyman's covered for a reason. We'll get to that reason a little bit later. Um, but J- Rob, do you have something to say? Would you like to acknowledge Roman Reigns this week? There he is. He acknowledged him. Look at that background. <laughs> Look at that. And uh, James, you know, uh, last week we didn't really end it. We didn't have, apparently, according to you, we didn't have time. You're sounding like Meltzer was spreading these lies over here. Um, do you have anything to say here? Didn't I acknowledge like he was a cheater or something? Uh, no. No. It was uh, an Extreme Rules match. There are no rules in an Extreme Rules match, sir. Therefore, he could not have cheated. Um, what did he do? Yeah, he cheated. No, no. The Uzos got involved and Grand Square. And it, it, it just wasn't right. If I'm looking for a tribal chief, they, they, they didn't fit the character, characteristics of. Uh, well, I mean, my kind God, of tribal chief. God so, himself acknowledged the tribal chief by getting involved in that match. God himself said, I didn't acknowledge I didn't hear, names. I didn't hear him say that. I He, he, he did it. He, he, you know, he didn't say it verbally, but he I, if it's not verbal, it didn't count. By dropping, by dropping the the turnbuckle, costing the demon the match, God acknowledged Roman Reigns as his tribal chief. Yeah, that's right. It was a fluke win. That's right. Uh, There's no doubt about that. There was no fluke. Yeah, that was a fluke. It was an extreme rules match, so it's not like yeah, Brian, a- when he when he fluke won the King of the Ring tournament by rolling up no. Bam Bam. That was a fluke win. No. You'd no, be decimated. No. You don't just fluke, roll up, bam, bam. It doesn't happen like that. No, that was a total fluke. He was totally losing that match, and he, he escaped. No, no, I don't think so. Yeah. So, anyways, let's get into uh, our discussion about the WWE Draft 2021. Uh, big shows the last couple of, uh, couple of days. Uh, we had last Friday on SmackDown, the draft kicked off. With some big draft picks. Do you, want, do you want to know why you should acknowledge Roman Reigns? Why? As chief? Because he's the one. So he was number one. The number one draft pick overall, both nights, for Friday Night SmackDown. And he was already on SmackDown, correct? Everyone got redrafted, sir. No, no, no. Uh, but no, that's the point yes, I'm making. Yes, but yes. I, I thought... I thought that was a good idea, and I thought they did it right. Absolutely. Because, it, because that's what makes it a draft. That's what makes it unpredictable. Mm-hmm. And had I maybe known that from the jump, maybe I would have, like, watched it live. And the, the reason I say that is because I remember the very first draft that they did, and I remember waking up the next day because there was, like, oh, you got to go online to – find out all the results and how the roster got split and my mom printed out the whole order and we looked at them mm-hmm. and I remember doing that whole thing um you know because you didn't know where people were gonna go right. and in these most recent drafts it was just kind of like if you're on Smackdown a handful of like four or five people were going to Raw some five six Raw people were going to Smackdown and then there was always some trade to be announced later kind of thing and was, I thought it was really kind of lame. 
that was more of a shakeup. No, uh, I feel like even before they did that shakeup thing, like I feel like that's how some drafts were. Like the last time I seen it, where the number one pick was the champion of that same show. Well, and it's not even that they were doing picks, but they were doing that randomizer. Remember? Yeah. Or was that part of the shakeup thing? I feel like even before the shakeup thing, they were doing the randomizer. They did the randomizer for a few years. Yeah, they did. I kind of like. That was lame. But I mean, obviously, I mean it is what it is. So I was glad that they got back to what what they did with this last one. And I think people were kind of into it. Yeah, no, I was very much into it. Uh, not surprisingly, again, Fox made made the right decision here, getting their first draft pick, the universal champion, uh, Roman Reigns. Rob is asking here, is James acknowledging him? Now I that did. He- I acknowledged him as a cheater. But you acknowledged him. You said, he. I acknowledge him. Mm. I acknowledge him as a cheater. I mean, you said the words, I acknowledge him. So I'll, as t- a I'll take it for now. I'll settle for now. But eventually, you're going to have to acknowledge him. Oh, yeah. Him. Oh, oh, yeah. Brock, you're going to settle. When he beats you're gonna Brock, settle. when he beat, no. when he made events another WrestleMania, you're just going to have to say it eventually. Um, no. Maybe. He, I mean, he needs to... Over 400 days as champion, sir. That's where he's at? That's where he's at. Mm, if he gets to 500, then maybe. <laughs> it's going to get there. It's going to get there. All right. The second, the second draft pick, for, uh, first for Raw, was the WWE champion, Big E. I thought it was... Oh, maybe that was the next night. I wasn't too happy with the results here. We'll, we'll talk about Why that. is that? Go ahead. We'll, we'll continue talking about it when we get down the line. Um, but, gotta, I mean, I think – but Big E, first of all, I mean, just off the first two picks alone, I mean, that's the right call. Smart the champion goes to one, it has to go to the other. Yeah, absolutely. You don't want to lose uh, two, both world champions to one mm-hmm. brand, obviously. So, of course, one the other brand's going to have a, their other champion. All right, so the next draft pick. So, by the way, unlike previous years, Raw did not get a third pick. Usually, they would get a uh, three to two because they had a third hour. Oh, yeah. This time, they would, it was even two and two each round. That's good. Yeah, so it evened it out a little bit. Uh, I still think during the uh, – they, they, they did a talking smack draft with a number of individuals, and I think Raw still got it more. But, you know. On and you know what? That – that always never that never made sense anyways because because you're depleting one roster. So there's also one extra hour though of television on. No, I I know that, but it's like you know they're not going to use everybody anyway. Yeah, and if anything, you're just moving people over, and then I don't know. It's it's just kind of a wait because you're you're adding more people, but you're not sending as many back. Yeah, yeah. So it's not adding up. Mm-hmm. I mean, they they always find a way. They'll make it work, but just the theory behind it isn't. I don't know. Go ahead. SmackDown, second pick, last pick of the first round for SmackDown, selected the Raw Women's Champion, the Queen Charlotte Flair. They okay. said, they said, we don't want Bianca Belair. We don't want. Sasha Banks. We want okay. the Raw Hold Women's on. Champion. Hold on. Hold on. Charlotte Flair. You know they just drafted her so they could have the belt on the show, right? No, they wanted the queen. The belt is just a bonus. No. No. Everyone's being smart. They're securing their title belt. I think well, that's the best way to go about it. Raw isn't, apparently, because their next draft pick and the, the last draft pick of the first round, they selected Bianca Belair. As they should. You know why? Because she should still be the champion. Instead, they have this cheat running around here. I'm sorry? Who? A cheat. You're throwing that word around a lot, sir. I'm not liking it. (laughs) All those SmackDown people are just cheaters. Sir. Or is she on Raw? We're about to find out in a little bit, sir. Is she a cheater? Next up, uh, we had the opening segment with Roman Reigns. He basically said he's the number one, and he tells Baltimore to acknowledge him. 
and they did just that. Most no, they didn't. <laughs> they acknowledged him. They cheered. Yeah, with, with booze. They cheered. But, like this. Uh, boo! Boo! What are you, ghosts? Boo! Not, yeah, see, it is spooky me. season. It is spooky season. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, he called them Baltimoreans. Well, Heyman did. Um, and then basically, basically called uh, Roman Reigns an exorcist against the demon. And at Crown Jewel, he will be the suplexorcist uh, against Brock. Wait, uh, wait. Oh, I was going to say Brock Lesnar said this? <laughs> yeah, he, so Roman Reigns will be the suplexorcist. There's not going to be a suplex city um, in a few weeks at Crown Jewel. Uh, he basically said, um, let's see, Brock's music hit. He came out looking like a farmer and all with his red flannel. With his red flannel. Mm-hmm. Uh, I wonder he, if Sable dresses like a, like a farmer too. <laughs> think she wears overalls? I don't know. That's it. But she's just so off the grid. The last time I saw Sable was, I think, whatever the last UFC fight was. Yeah, yeah. And I think there was a podcast Meryl put out, or it showed up on my YouTube feed. I got to watch it where Sable, where Mark Mel found out Sable was with Brock Lesnar. Interesting. I got to go back and find that. Yeah. Uh, Lesnar then cowardly attacked Roman Reigns. Mm-hmm. Uh, he ambushed him, basically. Uh, Usos came out. They, they took a few suplexes. That ended that segment. There. As they should, because they're cheaters. I don't appreciate your tone, sir. Cheat. Kayla was backstage with Charlotte Flair. Charlotte tells Kayla to congratulate her on being the first woman drafted. And uh, it's great. Imagine. Imagine what? She was the first woman drafted. I mean, it's whatever, but. Whatever. Still. She's a star. Again, again, if she doesn't have that title, are they taking her? No. Yeah. They clearly no. selected her. No. The, Next if, we had no, Kevin Owens no, taking no. on Happy Corbin. Mm. And his new associate, Madcap Moss. Who? Madcap Moss. Roderick Moss? Um, what's his name? Oh, my God. I forgot the name. It wasn't Roderick. It was uh, yeah. Riddick Moss. Riddick Moss. Yeah, Riddick. Riddick. Yeah, well, now Roderick? it's Madcap Moss. Moss, his gimmick is basically he laughs at everything. So, um, mm-hmm. and he's with Corbin, he it goes in line with Happy Corbin, uh, who's happy all the time now. So, uh, yeah, they go ahead. Okay. Corbin ended up big get, victory here. I get mind it. He had defeated Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens is totally on his way out. There's, yep, he's definitely on his way out. <laughs> he's getting job like that. There's a uh, and they're just rubbing it in. If Corbin's happy, they're trying to make him mad. Mm-hmm. Uh, next up, we have again Adam Pierce and Sonya Deville were the ones uh, calling the shots or announcing the draftees here from the networks. Uh, I will say the the draft does not go into full effect until the day after Crown Jewel. Uh, okay, that's a nice rule. I right can appreciate now, it. Right now, obviously, Superstar can still appear on both brands as are needed. Uh, mm-hmm. to finish up, you know, whatever business they have. Uh, but after the Crown Jewel, the Friday Night SmackDown after Crown Jewel in a couple of weeks, which I believe is October 22nd. Yes. Um, mm-hmm. That is when the draft will go into full effect. Um, it was also announced that this upcoming week, this Friday Night SmackDown kicks off the King of the Ring tournament, mm. as well as the first ever Queen's Crown, uh, King, Queen's Crown tournament. Um, and are they going to do these all in one night, or what is the format? It's going to gonna start this Friday on SmackDown, and we'll continue over onto Monday Night Raw. I'm going to assume either they have the finals on Raw, or they have the finish at maybe Crown Jewel. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Now, is there a bracket out already? There has not been anything announced thus far. As soon as there's a bracket, I think we need to predict it. Yes, we'll predict it on social media if it happens. Well, it's going to happen. Yeah. Uh, so as soon as I find a bracket. Um. Well, I'll be working on a day, but I'll try and find it early on. Hopefully, we'll get it. Uh, we'll get it out, or one of us will text it to each other. So we'll figure it out. 
Um, all right, the next, the second round of first night, SmackDown picked Drew McIntyre. Mm-hmm. Big pick. Change the scenery there. Yep. Change the scenery for Big Drew. Uh, Raw's first pick of the second round, RK Bro, the Raw Tag Team Champions, stay on Raw and stay together. Next pick, the SmackDown pick, the New Day, Xavier Woods, and Kofi Kingston. And they're on what show now? SmackDown. They split okay. the New Day up again, and this again, is bother because they could have drafted all three of them together. They're all good. They have. I guess they could have. Big E's a member of the New Day. Or, I mean, well, yeah, but that's some. Yeah, I mean, they could have. So I don't know why they don't. No, it, it dumb on them. No, it makes no sense. They did this last year. They acknowledged it. Big E even acknowledged it in a promo that you know they could have been drafted together, but for some reason. They don't want the media together. It's uh, absolutely sickening. It's disgusting. Um, anyways, moving on to the next pick. The last pick of the uh, second round. Raw selects the rated R superstar, WWE Hall of Famer, Edge. So he's getting sent over to Monday Night Raw. What? He was already on Raw, no? Or he was uh, on SmackDown? SmackDown. He's on SmackDown. He's been on SmackDown since he won the Rumble. Okay. Yeah, so... Uh, Kayla's backstage with McIntyre. Uh, he cuts, talks a, a little bit about the pro about his uh, desires to challenge for the Universal Championship. So, we have a guy here to another guy to lose to Roman Reigns, uh, and acknowledge him there. That's kind of a fresh match, though. No, they faced each other last year at Survivor Series. Oh yeah, in the champion versus championship match, right? And Roman Reigns won that, right? Yeah. So I mean, they have unfinished business, you know. Yeah, I think that works for a good storyline, and you're getting you can kind of jump into that with some something to to work off of, and um, I mean that would mean Drew would have to win at some point if he can get that win back, and it would knock Roman Reigns out of that 500 mark. I don't 500 think. Days. I, I think uh, Drew's got to start at the bottom. Drew's got to wait in line, wait his turn. Mm-hmm. Drew's got another championship match uh, coming up, by the way. So we'll, we'll talk about that. Um, so it's not like he, he should be just handed out these opportunities, sir. Um, but because we have about a minute, about a minute and a half last, left, uh, I'm not going to move, move on just yet to the next, uh, the next segment of the show. Um, I want to hold off on that. You- a little preview. Uh, when we return, I want to talk about we're going to wrap up Friday Night SmackDown, wrap up the draft picks there, as well as uh, get into Monday Night Raw, talk about the draft picks that happened on night two. Um, maybe we'll get a little discussion in on the who should potentially win the King's, King of the Ring tournament and the Queen's Crown tournament. We don't have brackets, but we could maybe throw out some names who, on who we would like to see in the tournament or, or win or something. So we'll, we'll, we'll cover that. Um, about NXT. Um, NXT. I haven't seen NXT, but we can definitely mention it. They did announce uh, a returning event that's going to happen, so that should be interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, once again, you can follow the show at Real BTR Radio. You can follow me at Ethan Every Ninety Five. You can follow James at at JHW Reporter. You can follow Rob at Rob Flores Media. And we'll be right back with more Beyond the Ropes. We are 22S Radio. 22S Radio is 22SMedia.com and 88.1 FM, KKJZ HD3, Long Beach, Los Angeles. Welcome back to episode 163 of Beyond the Ropes. I'm your host, Ethan, joined alongside the analyst, James, and producer, Rob Flores. We're talking about the WWE 2021 draft. Uh, we're currently in the middle, and I wanted to give this segment a little time because it was absolutely fantastic. Perfect segment here. Edge comes out to the ring, you know, calls out Seth Rollins, saying, you know, Seth co- has called me out over the last couple of weeks, demanding a rematch, and I'm here. He calls out Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins is on the video screen, and he says, you know, Edge, I've always found you to be a liar. I didn't think you were going to show up. So I went looking for you. And Seth oh, yeah. 
He's right outside the house <laughs> of Edge of uh, Adam Copeland. Um, you see the the Copeland. I don't know. State. The estate, I guess. There, there is a Copeland uh, thing there. What's his name, anyways? So, sign. Yeah, <laughs> sign. Yes, that's what I'm. Looking for. The sign. Um, he open, knocks on the door. You know, he's asking mm-hmm. for Beth. Obviously, Beth Phoenix. Um, and the door's open. Yep. The door. They left the door open. Apparently, Beth went grocery shopping and she left the door open. That's very uh, irresponsible. Damn. So she, he slides on in mm-hmm. with a nice uh, big uh, coat over there. Uh, looks on in. Beautiful home, by the way. Um, he takes off the coat. He's wearing another nice Seth Rollins jacket. Uh, he goes in the fridge, picks out some orange juice and an apple because he's, he's a little hungry. Dances all, on over to the table because he's going to be respectful. Puts his feet on the table, but that's fine. He's you know, hanging out. Takes a bite out of the apple and drinks the orange juice straight from the bottle. That gets mm. a crowd reaction. <laughs> Doesn't um, he know that he's in a it's COVID situation and he's over there putting his lips on another person's damn bottle? Being a menace over here. So can be me. Um, he he uh, looks at uh, Lyric and Ruby's artwork, the, the daughters of Edge and Beth. Uh, he says, you know, I know they're a little young, but they're their uh, artwork is terrible. Basically, trash is artwork. He then uh, uh, dashes over, notices their backpack, the school backpacks, you know, saying how cute they are. Goes to like a, a little den area, sees a family photo. Uh, he says the daughters look cute. He's, you know, he says, uh, thank God they look like Beth. Uh, <laughs> and then he, he jumps on the love seat. And kind of uh, pulls a uh, Dave Chappelle via Rick James on the mm-hmm. on the couch, kind of just putting his body all over. It. I, rem- I remember you sending this, right? I, I sent you the. I sent you the. You know, the I feel like that was like two weeks ago. No, that just happened. I felt like a while ago, but it, yeah, it was, it does feel like it was a while ago for some reason. Um, but anyways, it ended like that. Uh, Edge uh, ended up calling Beth, telling her to say. Uh, say at her brother's and uh, he said he's going to send I believe the names are uh, David and Daniel if I'm not mistaken uh, and who's that supposed to be it's supposed to be uh, apparently the real names of FTR formerly known as the Revival because um, they're good friends and they live in the area of North Carolina so Fun little fact there. So he would have used them though. Well, no, they he didn't mention them by their wrestling names and. Right, but still. I mean, they're obvious. They weren't involved in the segment. He just matched their names, so. No, I know. I know that silly. I'm just saying, like the. I mean, all the people you can use, but again, it gives those. They're in the area. They're in the area. Yeah. Yeah. They live near each other, which is legit. Uh, if you watched the uh, Edge documentary about his comeback, um, I forget which one it was. Uh, actually, trained, helped trained with them on his mm-hmm. comeback. So, um, but yeah. So, uh, basically, well, I'm sure we're gonna get that match at Crown Jewel. It's gonna happen. So the real life Halloween havoc. That should be fun. Um, I was hoping Seth was gonna be be there all week, uh, being a, a menace. And- <laughs> Uh, squatting in the house. <laughs> um, squatting? Yeah, squatting in the house. Doing what? Living there. That's what squatters do. No. Yeah, uh, he, he tweeted this out. Um, apparently, WWE says he went too far. Seth re- replied four hours ago, Edge invades Cena's house, slaps his dad, equals classic. <laughs> Uncle Sethy pops in for a quick apple and everyone is up in arms. <laughs> Y'all some gaslighting MFers. <laughs> to be fair, I mean, I mean, it's the whole visit the home uh, spot. I mean, it, it's, it's a been reference done. to what Edge did, So, which is great storytelling, by the way. Um, Edge did do that at one point. 
So, what did he do? He invaded Cena's home and assaulted his father. So that's right. I do remember this. So I thought you were saying he did something with the apple. Well, no, not with the apple, but the home invasion part, yeah. Uh, next up, we had a quick uh, Carmella and Liv Morgan segment. A quick one, huh? Uh, basically, Carmella now wears a face mask, and she beat up uh, Liv Morgan. Why? Because she doesn't want Liv Morgan messing up her face. So oh. she now wrestles with the face mask. Mm. Uh, next up, we had the third round draft picks. Happy Corbin and Mad Cat Moss were selected for SmackDown. For Monday Night Raw. Though? Yeah, they were, I guess, two for one deal there. Monday Night Raw so. selected Rhea Ripley and Nikki A.S.H., the women's tag team champions. See, that's a little funky. A little funky. You get, like, you get, you get Corbin and Moss, but I mean, you get Rhea and Nikki over them. I don't know. It's a little silly. SmackDown picked Hit Row. That's right. Hit Row heading over to the blue brand. Okay. We got Swerve, Top Dollar, Ashanti the Adonis. Rob, you predicted there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And B-Fab. You got B-Fab there, too. I can't think he did. I remember trying to get he, he it. Mentioned, he, he mentioned... Uh, he did, because I remember the word B-Fab, B-Fab. No, well, he B-fab. mentioned uh, Ashanti. He didn't mention mm. a little bit, Rob, but uh, he mentioned him getting called up. And he, they did. Hit Rose is now on SmackDown, so that should be fun. And Raw's, Raw's last pick was Keith. Bearcat Lee. Hmm. I just feel like like you were going based on on the importance of the like the stars early yeah. on, and then it's kind of like. Well, not everyone is eligible. Obviously, on night one, you have two that's different true. nights. So, yeah, that's yeah. True. so gotta save some yeah, but then what? But then, what makes you eligible and not eligible from one night to the next? Hmm? They just have a group. They split up the groups. I don't know by by accomplishments. I don't know. I don't. There's not really any set as to why they split up with who and who. That's true. All right. Next up, we had the New Day and the Street Profits team up in an eight man tag to take on Dolph Ziggler, Robert Roode, the Dirty Dogs, and the Alpha Academy. Uh, the faces ended up picking up the victory here. Mm-hmm. Next round on the draft, we had uh, SmackDown picked Naomi. Too high, honestly. Should have been uh, drafted. Uh, I mean, uh, she didn't cheat. She might have to very soon if she wants to get a spot on SmackDown because Sonya Deville's not having it. Oh, yeah, they got beef on uh, Raw selected Ray and Dominic Mysterio. They got shipped over to Raw. Uh, I had that one. SmackDown. I, I predict this one, I think. Wait, wait. You're not going to give me credit? Sure, I guess. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jeff Hardy. You say. <laughs> Jeff Hardy's going to SmackDown. Much needed for Jeff. Mm. Okay, we'll see. Raw, Raw selected Austin Theory all day. There he goes. What is it, what is, what is his gimmick? He like did the he did something with Jeff Hardy, some selfies well, or something. We're gonna talk about that, yeah. Uh okay. funny segment, Jeff came in for an interview, Brock then showed up and Jeff just kind of backed off. <laughs> so uh Brock uh said he would like to thank his good friend Paul Heyman. Because of him, Brock Lesnar is now a free agent. So Brock Lesnar is going to show up wherever he wants. Um, that wasn't good for Paul Heyman. We would no. find out shortly. Uh, because no, no, no. Roman Reigns and the Usos were backstage. And Roman asked if the Usos got drafted to SmackDown. 
and all you see is Paul. Paul's uh, covering his face, and you can see that he, he was crying. He's been crying mm -hmm. right on, saying no, the Usos weren't eligible on Monday. And he, Roman said, on Monday, you're going to go and ensure the Usos get drafted to, uh, to SmackDown or else. He said the Usos are going to show up on SmackDown. He told the Usos if they don't get drafted to SmackDown, leave Paul Heyman for dead. So, <laughs> I, I don't know. They're, they're killing off people now. Is that what they said, huh? That's what he, that's what Roman said. So, Paul that's Heyman. Like a, that's like Armed Anderson. Did you, did you hear Armed Anderson? Did they win? Armed Anderson over here. Armed Anderson. I thought that was the greatest Glock thing ever. Here. His Glock is in a, I don't know. Yeah, in, a, in the glove compartment or something. That was great. I popped when I it was days after the fact. It was actually like two days ago. I think I saw someone say "Arm Danison." I thought that was the greatest thing. In the main event, we had Bianca Belair take on Sasha Banks. Of course, no cheating in this one, huh? The, actually, there was. Um, um, Becky Lynch, fantastic on commentary, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, got involved and cost Bianca Belair the match. Sasha Banks ended up winning here and then was attacked by Charlotte Flair, laying out both Belair and Banks. Charlotte and Becky were both standing tall, raising their championships in the air. That concluded SmackDown there. So, fun show overall. Um, let's see. Let's get some viewership numbers for it. Talk about do that now. Go ahead. All right. I'll just run through all of them here real quick while we have a moment. Um, Why huh? Why not? Okay, here we go. Um, so the October, uh, well, we, we, we start off with SmackDown, right? So that was like October 1st? October. I think that would have been the October 1st SmackDown. Uh, the first night of the draft was 2 million, 2 point. 25 million and um, the raw for October 4th was 1.8 million 1.86 million uh, NXT was 632,000 that was October 5th or actually or maybe that was the 6th and then um, was Rampage the was it was what? the 5th it was the 5th and then Rampage was 622,000 and Dynamite was 1.1 million so, you know, we got uh, Dynamite, I guess, a little consistent in the millions. And uh, NXT and Rampage kind of doing their thing in the 600s. But, yeah, SmackDown's still the best show in terms of viewership. And I guess you can give credit to Roman Reigns for some of that. Maybe not all of that. Yeah, but I acknowledge Roman Reigns as a rating I, I did not. I did not. They still cheat. Cheating yeah, the ratings. Just... Rob, I don't think they give out smack impact numbers. It doesn't make an impact. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, you know what would have made an impact? I'm very disappointed, but I'm just going to say it right now. Say it with me, yeah. James. L A Knight did not get drafted. He cheated. He did not get drafted here. Because he's too busy cheating on NXT. Did he win the match? Yeah, he cheated. Oh, he what? I didn't even know that. Yay. He cheated. But he honestly should have been drafted because I don't know what they're going to do with him in NXT 2.0. Uh, I mean, they're going to have somebody. I don't know. But um, let's get into Raw really quick. Uh, the show kicked off with Becky Lynch proclaiming herself the number one draft pick of the night, um, although it wasn't official. Uh, she was then interrupted by Charlotte Flair. Uh, they got into it a bit. Bianca Belair showed up. I don't know why. She wasn't invited. But uh, wow. I guess she is a Raw superstar now, so technically, I guess she should, she could show up there. Right. See, she's just right at home. I guess so. Um, so after we got some bickering there, Jeff Hardy made his way to the ring and he took on Damian Priest. Okay. Uh, but before that, uh, the draft started. Becky Lynch was. Indeed, the first draft pick. SmackDown uh, Women's Champion Becky Lynch was the first official draft pick for Monday Night Raw. And I think she was the first pick the last time she was eligible too, right? 
I believe so. I think she was, yeah. She take she and she's taking that SmackDown Women's Championship over there. Charlotte took over the Raw Women's Championship, so that should be interesting. Yeah, I guess they're supposed to switch belts at some point, right? I don't know. Uh, SmackDown selected the Usos. Smart choice there. You know, good for Paul Heyman. He got a little sigh of relief there. Yeah, I'm sure he did. He would have. It wouldn't have looked good for old Paul. No. So he, he's still good for now. Um, Ross selected the almighty Bobby Lashley. Kind of a wasted pick. I don't know. Whoa, whoa, whoa. He could have been sent over to a main event or something. Why did they get the whole um, new business? The hurt. They didn't want the hurt business. It's tough. Yeah. Um, and then uh, SmackDown selected Sasha Banks. So a couple of wasted draft picks there with Lashley and Banks. but. Jeez. Um, I, I, guess people, I guess people like him. Um, Hardy and Priest had a solid uh, United States Championship match. Priest ended mm-hmm. up retaining Jeff Hardy losing on his way out to Raw. And he did mention in a post-match interview saying he might d- see a different ego of him mm. um, going over to SmackDown. Are we getting Willow here? Are we getting broken uh, Nero potentially? I don't know. Should be interesting. I hope they go with uh, go with it or do something interesting with them. Um, okay. And then he was uh, interrupted by a new uh, fresh face, which uh, we'll talk about when we return after this quick commercial break. Uh, but yeah, this is episode one sixty three of Beyond the Ropes, and we will be right back. We are twenty two S Radio. Twenty two S Radio is twenty two S Media dot com and eighty eight point one FM KKJZ HD three. Long Beach, Los Angeles. Welcome back to episode 173 of Beyond the Ropes. I'm your host, Ethan, joined alongside the analyst, James Williams, and producer, Rob Flores. We're talking WWE Draft 2021. We're uh, just a little over starting kind of uh, Monday Night Raw here. After the match, Hardy gets interrupted by Austin Theory. Comes out very excited. Cell phone. Um, saying, you know, he grew up watching Jeff Hardy. He was inspired by Jeff Hardy, and this was like a dream come true. Comes out very much like a fanboy, and he asks for a selfie with him, takes a selfie with them, and then boom, hits them with the clothesline. Um, hits his uh, TKO, I think it is. Um, takes him out, and then while he's down, takes a selfie with them. Very uh, Tyler Breeze-esque yeah. there. But, um, so I have a question. Are they um, – now, I know it's Indy Hartwell on, in, on NXT has a new tag partner as well, it seems. Is the Countess Theray whatever they're – I don't know. Because I believe, remember – I, I think I remember the last time we did an episode or two, I mentioned that they did a gender reveal or a baby reveal or something. So, so maybe she's away. Oh, not- that's the name, the way or something, right? Yes, the way. Um, well, they had the wedding a few weeks back, obviously. Yeah. Uh, and then last week, that was the last time Austin Theory was on NXT. You know, he had been gone mm-hmm. for several weeks. Um, obviously, he was going to get rumored to be called up, which he has now. Uh, so he seemingly is done with that story. Uh, they brought Dexter Loomis into that situation. Last week, they had they showed the honeymoon, which was great. Um, there was a lot. <laughs> they, they definitely pushed the edge there. Uh, showing, uh, I heard about it. I did. I heard. At least Dexter Loomis is using protection, because um, yeah. <laughs> uh, Johnny Gargano <laughs> was spying on them. Candice LeRae was there. They all went on vacation together and can kind of supervise and everything. Um, and so that was last week. So I don't know. This week, I guess Andy does have a new tag partner. I don't know what the situation there. Now after watching yeah. NXT, I know they're introducing a bunch of new faces. Obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm sure this is a way to incorporate new people into the fold. So um, I don't know what's going on with Johnny and Candice. I don't know if they're going to maybe take a little break or if they're just waiting for a new storyline or what's going on. Um, so we'll see what happens there. Um, but anyways, uh, Austin starting off by taking out Jeff Hardy there. Uh, I'm sure we'll probably see a match between these two next week on Raw or something. Uh, probably get the victory and send Jeff Hardy over to SmackDown. So 
um, that's usually what happens when someone gets drafted. So, um, but good, good for Austin Theory getting uh, getting used at least. Uh, next up, uh, we had. Let's see. We had Randy Orton call out Omas and challenge them to a match. So, uh, okay. they wanted to take them out. Shayna Baszler makes way to the ring. And uh, we're going to see her in a match in a second. But first, we had the next round of draft picks here. Second round, Monday Night Raw selects Seth Rollins. The Monday Night Messiah has returned home. Uh, Monday Night Rollins is here. All is right in the world. He came back backstage, uh, sunglasses and all. Um, he was, I think, singing some Eminem lyrics. Uh, it was fantastic. <laughs> Just um, amazing. Um, I got a bit of Seth merch in the mail today. I'm going to save it, though, because I don't want to do the reveal yet, because it's specific. It's a specific situation. So uh, I'm sure you guys will do that very soon. But until then, the next draft pick, SmackDown selects the Intercontinental Champion, Shinsuke Nakamura with Rick Boogs. No change there. Mm-hmm. Obviously, SmackDown wants that, uh, that kind of uh, mid-card championship, obviously. You got to keep that there. And why wouldn't you want a king? It makes, me wonder, it makes me wonder what they're going to do with the, the king gimmick on him, especially if they have King of the Ring coming up. I think he has to probably be in it, maybe be a favorite to uh, win it. Perhaps, perhaps that or uh, speculation that maybe Rick Boogs wins it and they both end up being king. So mm. that would be an interesting story. Uh, obviously, we all want Xavier Woods to win. He, he's been fighting for that for a clamoring for, for years. Yeah, he was trending on Twitter with that. He Xavier made, was. Made it clear on Monday Night Raw. He showed up and. Uh, he said, crown me. He's yelling into the camera, crown me. So I think that's been on his bucket list, too. That's what he wants. That's what he wants. So I could totally see him, him making it to the finals and losing on a heartbreaker. Probably. Uh, next up, Ross selected the United States champion, Damian Priest. No surprise there. Nakamura with the IC title to SmackDown. Raw gets the U.S. champion. Lastly, SmackDown selected Sheamus. So Sheamus moving on over to a different brand, fresh start for him. Uh, obviously, just uh, kind of getting out of the U.S. title picture there. So fresh start for him. Shayna Baszler quickly dispatched of Dana Brooke and was going to take her out before she was stopped by Dewdrop. So we're going to pretend to see a Dewdrop, Shayna Baszler feud there. That should be fun. Something different there. Uh, let's see. Next up. We had uh, Kevin Patrick, backstage announcer, stop the Usos and Paul Heyman. Um, and basically, uh, he asked how Heyman used his influence to have Brock Lesnar be a free agent. And mm-hmm. Heyman was petrified, and the Usos had a death stare, and they walked away from it. So Heyman's not on, not, not on the best of terms right now. I'm a little scared for him. Um, not looking good. Sorry. Yeah, man, can you wonder? Um, I mean, so, but if he's a free agent, why couldn't they, someone just draft him? Why, why, what is he? He's not tied down. I mean, well, he's a free agent, he doesn't land anywhere, he can go wherever he wants. I mean, but if you're in the company, I don't know. he's got the power, apparently. No, come on. We had a tag team match between Mustafa Ali and Rob, uh, James's favorite wrestler, not Rob. Talk about Rob's favorite wrestler in a bit. James yeah, Mansoor. Mansoor. Getting ready for the big homecoming. Mansoor is going to win the King of the Ring tournament in Saudi Arabia. Watch. There you go. Let's make it happen. King Mansoor. Uh, they took on the team of Angel Garza and Umberto Carrillo, the most handsome tag team in all of WWE, as uh, Corey Graves mentioned. You know, he, he said he was the third handsome handsomest guy there. Behind okay. Carrillo and uh, Garza, so I won't argue with them. It was a quick match, but Gar- Garza picked up the victory there. So uh, Mustafa Ali and Mansoor have not picked up a victory in a quite some time. I don't know if they have actually. So that's tough. It's tough. So I'm, I'm something's sure. gonna happen there. 
Yeah, so uh, Pagarza and Humberto Carrillo looking great as a tag team. I love it. I've been wanting these two guys to pair up. I'm glad it's finally happened. Uh, next up, uh, we got more draft picks. The next round, surprisingly a little low, but AJ Styles and Omos were drafted by Raw. I forgot if I had them separate or not. Uh, no, I think I had them together. Might have, yeah. SmackDown selected Shayna Baszler, so she's getting a different uh, change in scenery there. Raw selected Kevin Owens. Basically, basically going to be a waste at some point. Um, yeah, it seems that way. I think I had Kevin Owens um, as one of my picks. And SmackDown Rejected. selected Zia Lee. So we got another NXT call. Ooh. Zia Lee. Mm. From Tian Tian Shaw. Yeah, the name sounds familiar, but I couldn't put a name to it. You've seen her before. She was uh Oh, I've definitely seen her before. Very dangerous in the range. Very good. Biggie is uh comes out, he cuts a promo. Dana is excited, you know, about his challenges and everything. Calls out Drew McIntyre. Because Drew McIntyre came out at the end of his match last week, kind of uh basically saying, I'm coming after you next. Drew McIntyre comes out, declares himself, I want that championship. And they were interrupted by the Dirty Dogs. Sorry, I'm talking about uh, Ziggler and Rude. Ziggler demanded that uh, they both thank him for their success. They, he shows a video package of uh, him kind of uh, teaming up with Big E and Drew McIntyre on separate occasions. You know, mm-hmm. At one point, they were he was were associated with them. Um, and then we get to Nick, the greatest nickname of all time, Big Bob. Um, Big Bob, yeah, I remember Bob. seeing it. I think Big Bob almost hit, it was almost trending. That's right. And then uh, Drew McIntyre said, Big D, so. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, a lot of big being thrown around here. That led into a tag team match, of course, with Drew McIntyre hitting the Claymore uh, to get the victory on Ziggler. Big E then got Rude in the big ending, and we got to see uh, an official challenge that's going to happen at Crown Jewel for the WWE Championship. Drew McIntyre challenges Big E. Next up, 24-7 division. They all failed to capture it. They, I mean, Reggie's still, still hopping and popping, so... Uh, but they, he ran into Aziz, Commander. He said, popping and popping. That's right. Commander Aziz and Apollo Crews were drafted after the show on, on SmackDown to Monday Night Raw. They're the newest uh, selections for Monday Night Raw. And uh, Apollo said, uh, basically he said uh, he's excited to be on Raw. So hopefully some good things for Apollo. Next up. Um, by the way, we have to mention the Miz is on Dancing with the Stars. Seems to be doing great. Make sure we vote for him. Come on, I know you gotta send those texts out, James. Uh, next up, we had Kevin Owens looking like he was about to speak. He was interrupted by Akira Tozawa. Akira Tozawa said, I want a match against one of the 24 7 guys. Kevin Owens just hits him with a center and leaves. They got nothing going on for Owens here. They just had him hit a stunner and leave. Next round, we had the Street Profits being drafted to Monday Night Raw. Viking Raiders were drafted to SmackDown. New fresh, uh, nice little switch there. Finn Balor, this was my pick here. I predicted it last week, and I think it's the steal of the entire draft. Finn Balor selected to Monday Night Raw. Should be fun. Should be fun there. Him and AJ Styles uh, they tweeted each other. So should be should be interesting there. Ricochet, another fresh face over to SmackDown. I believe I predict this, this one too. Get, Sma- get uh, Ricochet over there. Get him a fresh start over on SmackDown. Next up, we had Natalia and Tamina challenged for the Women's Tag Team Championships. Of course, Natalia dropped the ball once again, losing 
to Nikki A.S.H. and Rhea Ripley. Uh, and we got to see new, or retaining tag team champions there. Fifth round of the WWE draft, Karrion Cross was drafted to Raw. Not, not, a, not a good thing. No, it's not, it's not a good thing here. Um, Humberto Carrillo and Angel Garza were drafted to SmackDown, so that should be fun. SmackDown picking up some, some young talent there. Alexa Bliss was drafted to Raw. And Cesaro was drafted on SmackDown. Could have, think he could have used a fresh, uh, fresh start on Raw, but I guess SmackDown's going to have to do with him. Next up, we had the legendary Goldberg head out to the ring and challenge Bobby Lashley to a fight. Real quick, real quick, real quick. Do we know if Lily came back at all? Lily was not back at all. Alexa Bliss has not been on TV. I'm she surprised did. she was drafted, considering. That's what TV. I'm saying, so yeah. Asuka was notably not uh, drafted. Neither was Bailey. Was, who was hmm. they, I think I, I think I read something that Bailey or that Asuka just been backstage, like they're waiting to find something for her to do or something. I'm sure that's probably it. Um, Bailey uh, called herself a free agent. She's a free agent, so that's that's cool for her. She got drafted, no? No, Bailey. Bailey's a free agent, so. Oh, I guess she got drafted. No, um, Goldberg, the hero here, called out Lashley. We're going to get a match at Crown Jewel. Um, if I'm not mistaken, this is no disqualifications. So he did say he was going to murder Bobby Lashley. So Jesus, that's right. Uh, the Hurt Business tried to cowardly attack Goldberg, and he took them out like nothing. Um, I think we're going to see Gage Goldberg there take out the Hurt Business at Crown Jewel. Oh my God! I don't know. Have to. That boy. Why are they paying for that boy to go overseas? He needs to go. He needs to stay home. He needs to do his homework. He's young. He's a wimp. There's no reason for him to be out there. He shouldn't be involved. Him. What did he try to do? Didn't he try to like? Who did he, he try to, to attack? His father. He tried to defend his father's honor. So. Now from Bobby Lashley. Yeah, and he paid for it. He How paid a penny. Yeah. No, and he put his hands on Bobby Lashley. You don't put your hands on Bobby Lashley. You New don't even day. shake hands with Bobby Lashley. The New Day took on the Hurt Business or the remnants of the Hurt Business. New Day ended up pick, picking up the victory, and right after, Xavier Woods went straight to the camera, yelling, crown me, crown me, crown me. So mm. he wants that uh, crown. That's the way to do it. I mean, when you're on live TV and you know the producers and all that are watching, you make the pitch. Absolutely. Uh, Rand Yoren then came out, and he, he got into the head of AJ and Omos. Instead of having a match, he just RKO'd AJ, and uh, they, they quickly got out of the ring. So uh, nice little segment there. Final round of the show and of the draft, Carmella. Drafted to Raw for the first time ever. Really ever. She, if I'm not mistaken, I want to say she's been on SmackDown her entire run. Mm, maybe. Pretty sure about that. Rich Holland called up Ooh. from NXT to SmackDown. He hangs out with Pete Dunn. Okay. He was there. He was there. Cool. Not my pick. I mean, it should have been LA Knight, but. It is what it is. Me. This one caught me off guard, and I'm, I guess, Gable's uh, Stephen, Stevenson. Yeah. Gabe was in trouble, I think. Well, he's not in trouble, but yeah, there are some allegations, I think, that he had in college that are starting to come forward again a little bit, so... Interesting. We'll see if that draft pick sticks. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. You didn't, you weren't aware of that? You didn't hear about that? I mean, I'd I only know. heard about it again this week, I guess, but I was not. Was definitely, it was definitely a thing. Interesting. We'll see how that pl- pans out. Um, And the last draft pick, Sami Zayn drafted to SmackDown. He wasn't very happy. Let me see. Mm-hmm. Uh, I saw, he, I guess, I saw an article that he replied to the Fox account. I yeah. didn't know he got drafted down that bad, but here we are. He'll be in there. He'll be a player for him. Absolutely. Main event time, we had Bianca Belair versus Charlotte Flair 
as they should. By disqualification, Bianca Belair won. Sasha, yes, Banks. She Sasha Banks came in and interrupted. She took out everyone, she, attacking she everyone. She cheated. I agree. It's cheating. She stood tall at the end of the show. So know, just put these women in the fatal four way, put all the titles on, on the line at this point. Why not? Yeah. Uh, we got a little less than 30 seconds now. Um, looking forward to seeing what's coming. We'll give our King of the Ring predictions over on at Real BCR Radio on Twitter. Uh, but until next time, this has been episode 163 of Beyond the Ropes. It's been too sweet.